Hi, my name is Dawn Larson. I'm business advisor with Navigator Marketing. And today, I just wanted to leave you with some important information. Many companies, your size and bigger, they really struggle with this one thing, and it's their online identity and security of that. So today, I wanted to share with you the top five tips to ensure that you don't lose your company's identity online. You know, you think it doesn't happen, but every week our company sees about five to 10 panic CEOs or business managers coming into our office because they've lost their domain name or access to it. They uh, can't access their website because they can't find their username and password, or they don't know where their website is hosted and their website's down for some reason and they can't access it. And they're very panicked. And also, you know, sometimes they have all these social media profiles with their name on it or their company name, but they don't know how to access them and they're you know floating around not updated and things like that and it's because you know one of their staff or their friends help them out and they don't have access to them so these are big deals uh, we cannot believe the damage that happens to companies as a result of losing access to their website or their domain name and uh, as a business owner you should be concerned if you're not concerned really take heed to some of the things I talk about today in this um, video series. But you can easily lose your business identity. Somebody else, when you don't renew your domain name for your website, can easily buy it and purchase it right away when it expires. So it's really important that you follow some of these five tips that we're gonna talk about today. And uh, really, it can impact your profile, uh, your leads, and your sales of your business. And it all happens like a series of harmless events, right? You know, uh, a business owner is busy, so he gets one of his staff actually to set up some of his accounts, right? Right? sets up his business website or buys the domain name and what happens is that staff moves on or better yet uh, the staff gets fired and what happens is the staff's now out of favor with you and vice versa and they move on and sometimes you lose touch with them and gone is your access to either your website or your other important online asset inventory so the other thing is that um, you know this is a really bad one too, but a lot of companies, they use basement programmers or people who are friends or say, yeah, yeah, I can do this for you for really low cost. Cause you're really trying to save some money and you've got somebody else that's just, you know, buying a domain for you or setting something up. Well, this is their hobby, this isn't their job. And so what happens is they move on, they travel to different uh, cities or different provinces, and all of a sudden you need access to one of these profiles or your website, and you can't find these people. And you're out of luck because you can't find them. And you know you can't go to different companies and say, I own this. It's very difficult to prove, especially with your social media profiles. So you could be out of luck. So you have this profile that's floating in cyberspace that has your name on it or your company name, and it's really outdated and you can't do anything about it because you know you've went that route and sometimes you know it's our own fault as business owners we're really busy and you're in a rush and you need to sign up for this tool or this online software and you, you subscribe or you change your password or your username on your website because you can't remember it sometimes we do it to our bank accounts too and what happens is we don't take the you know five seconds it takes to open a, a document and save that and then we're locked out of all those important things. So today, I wanna to share with you those five tips on how not to lose your business's identity online. And you know, these are some of the things that we do as a marketing company for our clients every day, but a lot of companies that we run into haven't done this. So we want you to take heed with at least these five things. Uh, so we'll start with number one. When we build a website for our clients, we usually purchase a keyword domain for our clients. And that's the URL or the web address for the, the client's website. So it's usually www.yourcompanyname.com or .ca. So when we purchase that domain on behalf of our clients, we ensure that the URL is owned by the client and their business, not us. And that's really important because a lot of people who set up your domains uh, or buy them for you don't do that. And that's where you get into trouble right from the start. The second thing we do is we ensure that the clients get the alerts when the domain name is ready for renewal. So when you purchase a domain name or your business domain name, you, you can purchase it for you know up to five years or so. But at that point, then it has to be renewed and the domain registry will then send you an email. But it has to go to a really good email. That means that there's a live body at it. So say your staff worked for you and then all of a sudden they've left your company three years ago. The domain gets to be renewed or needs to be renewed. And the domain registrar sends you updates, but they're sending it to an email address where the person doesn't exist anymore. 
very dangerous. So, you know, that's really important. We always make sure it goes to the business owner. And the third thing we like to do is we like to make sure that the, we use the business owner's email address, but we also like to have a couple of company stakeholders get that same email. Because as a CEO or business owner, we might be a little busy. We disregard that it says, hey, you need to renew your business URL. If you get that email, you should pay attention to it, but sometimes we don't. And so a couple of other business managers may pick up on it for you and say, hey, hey, this is important. And the other thing I like to do is I like to send that email when I register that domain to either an email address that goes to a couple people like info at yourcompanyname.com or sales at yourcompanyname.com or, or lastly web at yourcompanyname.com. Any of those will work and you can set it up that three to five people get that. So really important tool, really, really important that you do that. So number two is every social media profile that our company sets up, every website that we set up and every marketing tool that we sign our customers up to use uh, in their marketing and their sales, we, our, our team always does these things and they're really important. We include the owner as a main administrator and I get a lot of clients saying, hey, I don't wanna be involved with Facebook. But it's really important that you are because staff come and go, friends come and go, and you need to be the main administrator. You don't have to be active on Facebook, you don't have, but you need to be the administrator. We also include a few managers because you may be tied up, gone out of town, out of the country. We've had it where, you know, sometimes the business owner has passed away. The managers still have to run the business. So it's really important to have a couple managers also on, as administrators on uh, every account. And then lastly, we allocate certain staff uh, to have different levels of security. So even on Facebook, we can uh, allocate that some staff can add content, but they can't uh, you know, add or take away administrative rights to some of the people in your, um, your business. And you think these are tedious things, but they are so important when somebody else can take over your URL or take over your Facebook profile or take over your LinkedIn. And you think, well, does that happen? It happens every day. In fact, big companies, small companies, it just happens so often. So third, we create a confidential document and our company does this as a policy. We do it all the time, but many companies don't do this. Many other web design companies, they just forget about it. And it's so important. We create a document that's called an online asset inventory and we do this for all our clients, but here's what it includes. It includes every username and password for um, the company for anything that we um, have signed the company up for. Uh, any social media profiles, the website, and there's several things. There's website control panel, there's the website database, there's also the people who could just sign up and uh, change contents for the administrative rights. And any online tools like uh, Salesforce, where we have all our customers uh, contact relationship management software uh, and our databases, or any email software like MailChimp and Constant Contact, our YouTube channels for our clients, um, all of that information, any little apps that we've signed up the company for and they're using on their uh, computers, we make sure that all of the usernames and passwords and the URLs, we actually have it in a spreadsheet and right first it's, you know, constant contact. This is our, your, uh, your uh, profile for it. Then there's the URL so that you can get to constant contact. And then we put the username and the password. And if there's multiple ones, like there's maybe three accesses, we have all of that there. It doesn't take a lot of time. It sounds overwhelming, but it really isn't. And the time that it saves you when you're in a panic and you realize that you've lost um, access to that, uh, it, you know, it, then in hindsight, you say, wow, that seemed like a drop in the bucket in time to actually get that done. Number four, we ensure that our business CEOs and at least one key manager saves this confidential online asset inventory in a safe location, but it's easy to access. Because remember, CEOs and business managers travel a lot. So it's somewhere secure and it's not named in a file called username and passwords. That's the number one thing you want to avoid. But you know, so we have a special name for our file folder that's in a secure place, but it's not username and password. So you know, you find one that you know that the company then can remember member and access. And number five, this is important and I can't believe how many business owners we run into and business managers that haven't even considered this. And this is the critical first step in securing your online identity and, and making sure everything's secure. We encourage CEOs and business owners to actually create a five-step process and we ask them to enforce it with all their staff, new staff coming in and existing staff. And really this five-step process just shows people 
how to open a profile. So say they're opening uh, a Facebook profile for the company or they're opening an email software uh, system for the company. There's five steps on what they have to do. When they open that, they know that they're then told that they should go to the secure online asset inventory and add that content to the spreadsheet and add the URL to what software they're using. And it's that simple and if it's one document that everybody's updating, it just makes it so much easier. And, uh, and you know what, it saves so many companies that we work with. I get emails you know, saying, wow, that really worked. You know, that employee's gone and had we not had this, we'd be in panic mode. So really important number five, we use it as the fifth tip, but it really should be the number one tip. So if I've made you nervous about your security of your online asset inventory and you know, protecting the security of your business online, I hope you're nervous. Good, because you really need to pay attention to this because people come and go in your business. And as you know, it's hard to rely and trust that everybody's going to stay around for you know, the long term. And the fact that you know, you know, somebody you hired in the short term was there and now they're gone, it, it doesn't take much, right? And so you, you gotta have this, you gotta take that extra step. And so I'm just gonna leave you with this one example, this one horror story. So uh, a, a charity just came to us yesterday in a extreme panic because we just created a beautiful website for them. They loved it, you know, it was gonna get donations and everything. And all of a sudden it's down. And when we do the research for them, we find out that the domain was purchased by a friend who was just helping them out because they were trying to save some money. And the friend bought it from some guy in Britain. We don't understand why, but anyway, so it was bought by that person. We found uh, by looking online to find out who the owner of the domain was, and we suggested that they call them to find uh, to, to renew it. Well, the person was in jail, if you could believe it, so you can't even get access to this domain. Fortunately for them, we were able to research and find out that the .com was in the hands of this guy who was in jail in Britain, but the good news was we could buy the .ca version of their domain name, and within about five hours, we had uh, secured that new domain, we had their website back up and reconnected it to this new URL. But you know their business card said .com and you know, lots of things, lots of marketing things they have to change now as a result of this one thing that they thought they were saving money on. So it really can have a negative financial impact on your business, your profile, because somebody else can buy that domain. Say you let a domain slip, you don't renew it, and somebody buys it, and they put something that's not reputable on that domain. You, uh, you know, your reputation could be hurt, so it's really, really important that you, know, you take heed with these. So if you have any questions with respect to securing your online identity for your business, just re reach out to us uh, and uh, give us uh, some contact on the uh, contact box to our lab. Much success in your business and don't forget to protect your online identity.